Hey guys, Richard Holdner here, and thanks for joining me. Back in part one, we took a look at a comparison between a Junkyard 6 liter LS and a Junkyard 7.4 liter 454 big block Chevy to find out which one makes more torque. Now it's time to introduce strokers. In this video, we're going to find out a lot of cool stuff about stroker motors. We're going to find out how a 6 liter LS compares to a 408 stroker LS, and then how that 408 stroker LS compares to a big block 454, and then how all of these compare to a stroker 489. Let's get going. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda, I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember, join us live, 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. Okay, guys, I hope you took a look back at part one of our comparison between the LS and the big block. We took a look at 4853 and, most importantly, the 60 factory junkyard motors and compared that to a bone stock 7.4 liter Gen 6 454 to find out which one offered more low speed torque. So now let's take a look at stroker versions because everybody was wondering what happens if we go up in displacement on the six liter, can it compete with the big block? And then finally, what happens if we go up in displacement on the big block? So we're going to start out with our bone stock six liter. This was an LQ4. This was basically just a rebuilt stock motor. It had stock bottom end, stock pistons, rods, crank, everything. It had stock 317 heads, had the stock camshaft in it. It had the stock truck manifold. It had an aftermarket throttle body on it, but it was the same size as the factory one. We did have an optimized tune because we were using a Holley HP management system. There were no front accessories and we run it a little bit cold. So this thing makes more power than the factory rating, but run the way that we run it and the way that we would compare it to every other motor that we're going to take a look at. This thing produced, this six liter produced 405 horsepower and 439 foot-pounds of torque. So the question is, yeah, Richard, what happens if we stroke that? Because this is very common on the 6-liter, on the iron block especially. Guys make 408s out of them all the time, which is kind of the limit that I recommend with the stock sleeve length because if you put a, you can put a 4100 or 4125 or 4200, 4250, you can fit those stroke cranks in there, but the problem is the piston comes down out of the bottom of the cylinder, and that's not good. That's why we sleeve a lot of these blocks if we want to go up in displacement a lot. But a 408 is very common, and as it turned out, I have exactly that. I built a 408 stroker, and we're going to take a look at that now. So this was a 408 stroker, and I was using it to do a bunch of different tests. Right now, it had the same camshaft that we had in the 6 liter, but it was 408 inches. It was a 4030 bore, a 4-inch stroke. This one had Airflow Research 245 heads on it, which are probably not the heads that I would pick if I was going to just do something to maximize low-speed torque production. But this is what I have, and this is what we have to take a look at. We had long tube headers on it. We had the fast LSXRT, which again, I don't know that that would be my optimum choice. If you really just want low-speed power, probably the Crossram Holly would, might be the choice. Um, or even a maybe a Trailblazer SS intake manifold might make a little more than the Fast. The Fast is a little bit better on the top. But this is the only 408 I had that we uh, ran at this RPM range. And then also that we ran with a stock camshaft. So this is an interesting comparison on the 408. It had a dish piston in it, which means the compression was probably less than 11 to 1. And we ran it on, all of these were run on 91 pump gas. But you can see, as we would expect, the bigger displacement motor obviously made a lot more power. So equipped with a stock camshaft, and that's what's really holding this combination back, it made 449 horsepower and 522 foot-pounds of torque. And the fact that it made 522 foot-pounds should tell you what's going on here and how much extra potential this thing had. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we made upgrades to the 408. We've taken a look at what happened when we went up in displacement to a 408 inch motor versus the standard 6 liter. We ran the stock cam and we had good heads on it. And by the way, I made a reference to the AFR heads and they might not be my first choice, a 245 head for making low speed power. I took a look at the big cylinder head test we did where we compared to these AFR heads to basically 15 other different ported uh, LS heads, including the stock one, and there's actually no loss of low speed power. So it turns out that they might actually be a fairly good choice. Um, but here's what happened when we put a camshaft in our 408. Obviously, it struggled using that stock camshaft 
and that, that was a stock 5.7 camshaft, so it was the smallest of all of them. Now, this thing was hadn't, didn't have nearly enough camshaft, and that's indicative of, if you take a look, we were making 522 foot-pounds, but only 449 horsepower. But here's what happened when we put a fairly small camshaft in it. This was a Crane 206. We'll take a look at the description here. 500 lift, 206, 214 at 50 and 114 degree load separation angle. So think of that as kind of a truck cam. Um, you can see we gained power everywhere. Peak power went up from 449 up to 515. Peak torque went up from 522 foot-pounds up to 556 foot-pounds. So this was a good cam for this combination, especially since we're concerned more with low speed power. And you can see now that the 408 is offering a lot more torque than the six liter was down here at... Uh, Oh, let's pick 33 or 3,400, 415 foot-pounds versus 503. So it's up quite a bit from the extra displacement. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Richard, since we put that camshaft in, what happens if we put even more camshaft in? And that's a good question. And I did exactly that because we ran this 408 with a bunch of camshafts in it. Here's what happened when we put the 224 cam that I always run anything. That's a 590 lift a 224, 232 degree duration, and 115 degree lobe separation angle. So it's a good cam, made lots of power, pushed peak power all the way up to 583 or 584 horsepower. Peak torque was up a little bit to 566 foot-pounds, but it's basically shifted everything out higher in the RPM range. And we see that because the 224 cam lost torque compared to the 206 cam from 4,400 on down. And it even lost torque compared to the stock cam uh, below 3,000 RPM. They were kind of the same um, from 37 or 3,800 down to 3,000. But then below that, the, the 224 cam would start to be softer, which is probably why you would need a converter. On a 408, it's obviously much better than on a 6 liter. But it makes lots of power. And I wanted to show you one final camshaft that we ran in this thing. This was the biggest cam that we ran. That's a 240 cam. So that camshaft was 600 lift, 240, 248 at 50, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And as you would expect, it the we had enough displacement and head flow, and we had a good intake manifold on it with a fast LSXRT. This thing made 625 horsepower. Peak torque was up also to 580 foot-pounds, but again, it's just shifted out further. But it lost torque at the same point, about uh, 4,400 RPM. It made less torque than the 206 cam, less torque than the 224 cam, even less torque than the stock cam. And so it just makes more power out of the top, which is typically kind of what we see with these camshafts. There's always a trade-off, and if you get a lot more top-end power, you usually sacrifice the bottom. Now let's take a look and see what happened with the big block. Now that we've taken a look at the LS Stroker versions, it's time to take a look at the big block Chevy. This is our junkyard Gen 6 454. I've run lots of these. This particular one was run with a dual plane Wyant intake manifold, the 750 Holly, long tube headers that we use on the dyno and, a, and an MSD distributor. Otherwise, the thing was all stock. And this is what they tend to make. This thing produced, you know, you can see it produces a lot of torque, but it made 370 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 476 foot-pounds. And again, some of that is gonna vary on the particular motor that you get. Was it taken care of? Is it still in good shape? We just put this thing up there and ran it. And we they range from 375. Sometimes we see, you know, 480 or 85 foot-pounds of torque. But this is um, the shape of the curve and you can see it works pretty well. Here's what happened. Uh, you can gain torque, if that's what you're looking at, by putting the right camshaft in it. Here is a, or a Comp 276 cam. You can see it picked up torque everywhere, even below 3,000 RPM. I'll go ahead and give you the specs on that. So if you wanted to put, and if I was just looking for torque, I probably would go slightly smaller in the camshaft. This was an XE 276, 510 lift, 224, 230 at 50, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. I like the tighter LSA for this thing, which is why it's helping it down low. But you could step one size down in camshaft if you were just concerned with torque production. But that's the standard displacement 454. Let's see what happens when we step up. And the most common one would be to put a uh, 4250 stroke in this thing. And a lot of times they bore them to make either. This, this one was a 489. You could also make a 496. 
as you can see, we picked up uh, a ton of power everywhere. And again, none of these combinations that I'm showing you were done specifically for this comparison. So we could probably optimize these a little bit better, although these do show what a lot of people do. This particular 489, I'll go ahead and give you the specs on that was a four bolt gen four or gen five block so it was a flat tap it deal it had a set of trick flow 320 aluminum heads on it there might be other choices that you could use like if i was just strictly looking for torque i think i probably would go with an afr 265 head um, you might also be able to do ported peanut port heads you're not going to get this kind of power but um the camshaft that we use in it was a 613 608 lift split a 230, 236, and a 113 LSA. Again, you could go, I think, a little bit smaller, although on a 489 or 496, that seems to be working fairly well. We had, and the important thing for this, for torque production on a big block, if you're looking for low speed torque, definitely use a dual plane intake manifold. We used an RPM air gap, which worked good. We used a Holley 950, and we had our, we did our timing, and this thing wanted 34 to 35 degrees with those cylinder heads on it. So this, this combination worked out really well. We produced 604 horsepower. And the most important thing that we're looking at is 603 foot pounds of torque. So it's nice and square. It made the same horsepower and same torque. And you can see it was up quite a bit compared to the stock one. You know, we're looking at 465 versus 400 or 582 here at 3000 RPM. And that gain would continue to be, uh, you know, it would continue down low, even if you wanted to run this thing down 2,500. But again, if you're looking only for 4,000 or 4,500 and below, I might select a slightly smaller cam, but this gives you a pretty good idea on what displacement does. And we'll take a look quickly at one final deal. If you really wanted to go up in displacement, uh, obviously the nice thing about having a big block is you can go up really big. And this was a 555 inch motor. And again, not made for just maximizing torque production. Just wanted to show it to you to give you an idea. It made over 700 foot pounds and 729 horsepower. We have stuff that's 850 or 900, depending on what combination that we want to put on it. But this was the one that uh, we ran down as low as 3,500 RPM. And it has a nice, uh, you know, a nice torque production down there. This one was a uh, 4.560 by 4250. It had uh, forge internals. It was uh, around 10 to 1 compression, 10 and a half. It had a 680 lift, 246, 254 at 50 and 115 degree lobe separation angle. Uh, crane cam was a hydraulic roller. It had AFR 300 Magnum oval port heads. And this one had a single plane on it. So again, we could do a little bit better down low with a dual plane. Although on a 555 inch motor, a dual plane is going to start to be kind of restrictive unless you did some porting on it. Now let's take a look at a comparison between the LS stroker and the big block stroker. Okay, this is the part everyone's waiting for. We're going to compare the Stroker LS to the big block. And this is uh, the torque curve offered by our 6 liter. And I'm only using torque curves because I put, I'm put i going to put so many combinations up here that it gets very confusing because they're running at different RPM and stuff. So the torque is the thing that we're interested in, especially the low speed stuff below 4,500. That's kind of what we're concentrating on. But this was a torque curve of the stock 6 liter LS. And this is why everybody wanted me to do a Stroker version of that because here is the torque curve offered by the stock 454. And you can see below 4,400 RPM, the big block 7.4 liters made a lot more low speed power than the six liter did. Not surprising, it's bigger. But here's what happens when we add a bunch of displacement to the already pretty efficient LS. Here is our 408 with the 206 cam, which was the best torque combination. And you can see it makes more torque everywhere. So if you want to put together a Stroker LS, you could make more torque than a junkyard big block Chevy. This thing made, uh, you can see it, it was it was up 25 to 35, 40 foot pounds compared to the stock big block. And, you know, it was making over 500 even down here at 3000 RPM. It made a peak torque of 556 foot pounds compared to just 475 for the big block and compared to just 439 for the six liter stroker. But the fact that a built 408 stroker LS makes more torque in this case and more power, a lot more power than the junkyard 7.4 liter big block is not surprising. What happens if we then apply the same things, heads, cam and intake and extra displacement that the big block can tef definitely do. What happens if we apply that to the 454? Well, let's take a look. We'll take a look at our comparison with the 489 that we ran, which was the best combination. 
And you can see, again, not surprisingly, we went up in just displacement dramatically to 489 cubic inches rather than 408 cubic inches. And voila, magically, it makes more power and it makes more torque. Torque was up over 600 foot-pounds. And you can see, compared to the 408 LS, uh, we're, we're looking at 500 foot-pounds versus 582 foot-pounds. So it's going to be better everywhere. Again, not surprising. Bigger motors, if you give them everything that they need, heads, cam, and intake with the additional displacement, they're going to make more power and more torque. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure on our stroker assemblies? Obviously, bigger is definitely better. And we saw this going from the 6 liter LS, 364 inches, all the way up to 408 inches. Guess what happened? It made more power and it made a lot more, say it with me, Torque. Bigger is definitely better. In fact, the LS408 assembly was so efficient, it ended up making more torque and power than the bigger 454, although that was a stock motor. But what happened when we went up in displacement and efficiency, because we added cylinder heads, cam, and intake manifold on our 489 stroker big block, it then made even more power than the 408. So say it with me, there's no replacement for displacement. If we went from 489 to 589, 689 and 789, I guess you can go that big. Guess what happens? It keeps making more and more torque. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.